ladies and gentlemen, here's your host with the most, Avril R32 here as I adjust my mat and destroy the ever-living tier element boo-boo stain off of that like and subscribe button as we climb even higher, the 1300 ladder. I'm sure that there are going to be people that are cringing in the comment section of this video and as we try to adjust this a little bit, I don't need y'all seeing the wood up on uh, my desk. But yes, ladies and gentlemen, we're playing tier element this format. Now, why am I deciding to play tier over something that costs $500 like Rescue Ace? It's not because I don't have the money. Uh, I just buy whatever deck I want to play for the format and then I turn around and sell it when I'm done with it. Uh, I have a regional November 11th in Kissimmee, so if you're going to be there, be sure to come on up and say hi. I'm always happy to meet people that know about me on the YouTubes. Um, but I feel like this deck overall has the best board building ability and it's very adaptable. Um, and when you get lucky with that RNG, you're going to win the game. If the opponent doesn't have shifter and you build a board, they're losing the game. If you go into a tier element mirror match, you basically have to pray that you can make a dweller before just start before you just start popping off or you're probably going to lose the game. Um, the mirror match is really cancerous. I've been running into it a little bit more recently and it's it's really toxic but you know I, I'm sure some people are gonna be cringing I'm sure some people are gonna be pissed like Avery you're playing a degenerate deck um, I've had some people t call me certain names on EDO Pro that I'm not gonna say here on YouTube um, and I, I don't really know why like I understand like it used to be a tier 0 deck and people get pissed off about it but like the deck's just RNG like that's all it is like if it hits good on the RNG like okay you lost like, sorry, boo-boo, like that's how it happens. And I've had hands where I have to summon a Rhino Heart and hope you don't have a hand trap. And majority of the time they have a hand trap because my luck sucks in this game. So it works both ways. So with that being said, um, I haven't been looking at the results from YCS Bolivia for my deck building because I saw two builds and I instantly hated those builds. Um, I feel that my build, it plays much more better into Rescue Ace, if that's even a valid sentence, much more better. Um, much better, I guess, would be the right way to say it. Um, I, I don't like Nib in the main deck. Spoiler alert, I, it's a terrible top deck. So, anyway, with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and dive on into this build. Let me know in the comments if you would change anything about it. Um, starting off, three Rhino. I've had people tell me to play two. Um, I really like three. You want to see this card all the time. You can side out one when you're going second. Um, like, if you're bringing in your buy steals and stuff, I typically side out a Scream, a Rhino, and a Diviner because you really don't want to see Diviner in your opening hand going second because if they have a board built, they're just going to negate it not let you get a milk five off. Uh, Rhino is awesome. It's it's very, very good. Um, I apologize about the proxies too. I'm still waiting on some cards to come in the mail. I waited as long as I could to do this deck profile. Uh, so hopefully this comes in soon. I basically have everything now. But three tier element cash tira. These cards are $20 now, if you can believe it. But th this card's insane. You combine it with Scream, you end up milling six cards. And it was actually funny because uh, <laughs> I was playtesting against my dad and I started popping off. And I milled 10 cards from his deck with Aigido and Kelbeck. I milled three off of his with tier element cash. And the reason why I did that was because I'd already gone through all my fusers. I really didn't want to mill anything. So I'm like, let me just hit him for three. I had another tier element cash tier for the next turn. So I could mill him three more. And I ended up like within like two turns milling him out because I used uh, Keldeo to put back... Um, Aigido and Kelbeck like it, it was a it was a slobber knocker so it's very rare but it actually is possible to like pretty much mill the opponent out if they're playing a 40 card deck or at the very least get them down to like only a couple of cards left in their deck and at that point like any deck that gets milled out even if all their stuff's in the graveyard is gonna have a hard time especially if they're underneath a dweller so that's actually what I've tried to do in some of the tier element mirror matches is just try and mill them out if they're under a dweller but uh, the tier element mirror match is really difficult. Maybe I'm just not a good enough player to handle it, but I just, it's it's toxic all around. Um, we're playing one Hoff Fennis, one Sharon, and one Murley because these cards are at one for a reason. Uh, if you're not playing these cards, I don't know what you're doing. Uh, we are on the Destiny Hero package. We're on the one Denier and the two Mallies. Um, I promise we're almost done with the proxies. I think we only have a couple more. <laughs> um, but I'm on the Destiny Hero package, and yeah, I'm on the Danger package. Um, you don't need Denier, but Denier allows you to uh, be more lazy with your Mali lines um, because if you're not playing Denier, then you have to make sure you establish the Dangerous and you basically are forced to mill both of your Mallies or to like get one into the grave and have one on the field or in your hand before like you can commit to the Dangerous because like if you only have the one Mali, then like, yeah, you can send it back and then ditch it, but then like, 
then you're ditching a card just to like banish Mali for Mali, and it's like the denier helps you extend. Like denier as an extender is fantastic because after you commit to the Beatrice, then like if you end up detaching the Mali, you can go for denier, or you can go like Mali banish for Mali, summon denier, put back the Mali, make cross sheep, then do Mali, and then overlay with the dangerous for Beatrice. So it lets you be more flexible with your your Mali lines. I, I think it's even though it's not needed and it is technically a flex spot, I think that it's just really good to have. Um, and then for the danger package, we're playing the one Mothman with the triple Nessie. I've been seeing people cut this uh, down to one Nessie, one Mothman. Admittedly, the dangers don't come up a lot unless you're in an awkward situation. Um, but I really don't like the Unchained monster being able to pop a card, and I don't really feel like I need Destrudo. And if I play Destrudo, I know for a fact my ass is going to lose in time. So, like, it's cool, but I feel like the danger cards are just overall better. And uh, the Unchained monster isn't a bad mill. I forget the name. I think it's Unchained Soul Lord of Yama, whatever the blue one is. Um, they've been playing one of that with one Destrudo and then one Nessie and one Mothman. So they're essentially cutting two Nessies for that. And I get the concept behind it. Um, but for me, I would rather have the ability to potentially hit a Mothman to then draw and then ditch if my hand's a bit awkward. If they draw me, they draw me. Like, I'm not seeing draw a whole lot. And draw really doesn't hurt this deck outside of danger lines. And if I'm milling my ass off, I don't need the danger cards anyway. Like, I'm just using the Nessies to make Garua, and I'm using the Mothman to make Mud Dragon. So, like, I don't care about Droll at that point. So, yeah, they don't come up often, but if you don't need them, if they're just chilling in your hand, you just use them for Mud Dragon or Garua lines. Uh, and then we're playing three copies of, it should be called the God Card of the Herald, because this thing, this thing is the equivalent of Gen and Ken in, like, Dark World, because... This gets Ash and Impermed all the freaking time. Diviner being able to dump Aigido or Kelbeck is insane. Um, if they're not, if they, if you normal summon Diviner and this is your only play and the opponent doesn't negate this, then you know for a fact they don't have Ash or Imperm because any good player is going to Ash or Imperm this because you get off that mill five, you basically won the game. Hardly ever do I mill five cards off Aigido or Kelbeck when normal summoning this and not hit something like whether it's a fuser or a searcher from Sulik or a search off of scream you are bound to hit something like the math is just in your favor at that point they don't negate this you don't have to worry about asher imperm like they're they're just telling you listen you're gonna pop off because i don't have dick uh and then of course we're playing the one keldeo one Medora, one Aigido, one kelbeck these cards need to be fucking banned these cards are insane bro uh I, I, it's it's such a beautiful thing. It's like a turn on when you dump an Aikido or a Kelbeck, you mill five and you hit the other. Oh my god, milling ten cards is like, it's such a fun pastime. Like, it's just fantastic. These cards don't need no explanation. These cards are broken AF. And then we're on the one Shadal Beast because Winda is broken AF. Um, for the spells, we're playing three copies of Pellerino because you, you need to get your searches. Cannot tell you how often I mill these cards and it pisses me off to no end. Like, these things love getting milled and it's such a shame. Uh, three copies of Scream. Again, something else that people have told me to play it too. I don't know why because I don't mind getting the traps in my hand because if anything, they act as fodder for special summoning Rhino Heart from the grave. Uh, or just like if you side deck in Crime, then you can search Crime, set it, and as long as you have Monster in your hand to ditch, then you're good. But Crime is a different story because I don't even know how I feel about Crime. It hardly ever comes up. I hardly ever have a Monster in my hand. But being able to combine this with Kashtira Tier Element and Mill 6, yeah, it's... It comes in clutch a lot. Or even during the opponent's turn, or if you go second and get it established, make their monster start losing 500 attack, which combines well with another card that we're playing that you'll see in a second. It's really good. This is the last proxy, I promise. <laughs> uh, this is our proxy for card destruction. Play card destruction. Card destruction on a bricky ass hand, if they don't have ash, is beautiful. You just chain all of your tier element stuff. But yeah, that's that's not decisive battle of Gogana. That's card destruction. Um, one foolish barrel of goods for the Triva Karma. One foolish barrel. Uh, one terraforming and then we're playing this is my tech because this is way better than nib droplets so droplets like i was saying with scream droplets combines well with scream because you cut the monster's tax in half and then they lose an additional 500 or vice versa make them lose 500 then cut it in half and lower it even more i love droplets because of the fact that uh, if you're going second, this is a better top deck than Nibiru. Nibiru is just a dead draw all day, every day. Whereas if you top deck Droplets, then like you, if they have Dweller, this is an out to Dweller. Uh, I did think about Chalice. The problem with Chalice that I found was that 
it only negates one monster effect and you can't insulate yourself from other negation that the opponent will probably have established on the board um, whether it's a Terra Hertz and Rescue Ace or Sun Avalon Rika or even in like the tier mirror match you know being able to ditch other monsters to insulate yourself from monster effects and be able to negate a bunch of cards is great it's even better whenever you have a bricky hand because you know if you open up Aigido and Kelbeck you ditch Aigido and Kelbeck you know they're they say just when they're sent from the hand or deck to the grave so even though this this sends for cost and not by a card effect so it doesn't trigger your tears it's still good in that regard you have a Malian hand you can dump it and then banish to summon you can get it out of your hand you activate scream um, you've got the field spell up, you've got a couple cards established, the opponent decides to pull a negation out, you can use the droplets and use cards on your field, you've already used their effects, or like, I summon Rhino Heart, activate the effect, I've had people like try and imperm me, or Dragos Capellia me, and I'm just like, droplets, and then I just negate their card, I dump the Rhino Heart to Grave, I still get my Armageddon Knight dump, and um, yeah, so th this, this card's just fantastic, I really really like droplets i don't know why people are on nib uh because nib is not a good mill droplets is also not a good mill but i would rather go with droplets because yes if you have like a good hand you don't want to dump your fusers but i would take this over nib any day because you know again a nib is not a good top deck i would rather take the risk of playing droplet over nib and be able to have a better top deck so i really like droplets uh in case you can't tell um, for the traps, we're on one Trevor Karma, one Meta Noise, and double Sulik. Um, I wanted to play Heartbeat, and I was thinking about side decking it. Um, the problem with Heartbeat is actually what I saw at YCS Indy, where uh, if you do it to Rescue Ace, Rescue Ace really doesn't give a crap, because if you activate Heartbeat, yeah, it's a quick play, but if they just chain the back row, if the back row doesn't get shuffled back, then you don't get to dump a card. So you're essentially just forcing out that face down uh, if they're able to chain it. Um, so, like, it, it's... It's not really going to do you anything. I'd rather have something like Meta Noise, where like if I dump a tier element cash Tira, I can use this effect in mill two and then use the Meta Noise to pick it back up. So it, it gives you constant recursion and fodder. Or like you dump off Venus and like you already use the effect of Fuse, just pick it up with Meta Noise. Um, and then also it being a Book of Moon going first is really freaking good for helping be being able to crack boards. Uh, and Triva Karma is Triva Karma. Um, for the extra deck. Uh, one Kaleido Heart, uh, since we're not on King of the Swamp, obviously we're not going to be on Rue Kalos. Uh, one Garua, because it's good. One Mud Dragon, because it's generic. Dragos Capellia, because we're tier. Dangerous for the Destiny Heroes. Uh, Winda, because it's a god card. Baron, because it's also a god card. Abyss Dweller, because, uh, I d honestly, yeah, it's the god card of this format. It's not always a god card, but it's a god card of this format. Um, it's decent against Branded. It doesn't really do much against Rescue Ace. Uh, in the tier mirror match, it's just a blowout card, obviously. Um, yeah, like anything that needs the graveyard. Unchained, you do this against Unchained, like you're and you know what you you're gonna know what the opponent's playing in game one, so you'll know whether to commit to the redoer line or dweller, because if you hit I Aigido or Kelbeck, then they're gonna mill five. You're gonna know most likely what they're on. So, you know, this if they don't care about the grave, or this if they do care about the grave, you go against unchained or tier, they're gonna crap all over the floor when they see that dweller. Uh, and then we're on one Beatrice, because this thing being able to Foolish Burial and Aigido or Kelbeck is insane. Um, and then we're on SP Little Knight. Yeah, it's it's $110. We pulled, like, three out of my case. You should go watch that shameless plug. And, of course, my dad pulled two of them. <laughs> no quarter century SP Little Knights, unfortunately. But, yeah, no, you, you got to play this card. I was trying to play Masquerina with it, but I just didn't have the space. Um... But, yeah, no, Little Knight's just nuts. Majority of the time, your end board is something along the lines of, like, Baron, Little Knight, Dragos Capellia, maybe a Sulik or a Menonoise in the back row uh, with, like, a Dweller and or a Redoer if you have the gas. Um, Cross Sheep, it, it just helps you extend. Uh, a Dark Charmer because it's nuts. Uh, and then Sprite Sprint and Underworld Goddess. So... I was on Dugaris instead of Sprint. The problem with Dugaris is that Dugaris doesn't come up a lot. I do like the fact that you could slam together, say, like Rhino Heart and uh, Mothman, make a Dugaris, detach the Rhino draw to ditch one. You can ditch, like, you know, a Shayrin and get a Fuse or something like that. But the issue is, is that if I'm committing to two level fours to make a rank four line, it's going to be for Dweller or Redoer because you're probably not going to have the gas to do one of those if you go into Dugaris instead. Um, and I feel like even in that situation with uh, Rhino Heart and Mothman, I feel like I'm just better off like going into something else, like whether it's Dweller to lock him out of the graveyard, 
or like if I'm able to extend and put a level two on the board or like go into a rank two and like say dark charmer in that case, since Mothman's a dark, get a dark from the opponent's grave and make Sprint, dump them early, you have lines. I feel like Sprint is just better overall, um, especially for like an M board card. If like you don't want Little Knight for whatever reason, you can do Sprint and then bounce one of their special summon monsters. Underworld Goddess, I've been thinking about cutting, um, but I feel like Underworld Goddess is like actually kind of good for cracking boards. Uh, like, if you've just got, like, four generic gas monsters on the field that you don't need, uh, you can just go Underworld Goddess. I did like Dugaris, though, like I said, because you have a Garua up, then you use Dugaris' effect to double its attack, so it goes to 4,000, assuming you have the field spell up, and that's 8,000 damage. That's that's a kill shot, um, but it, it just didn't come up enough. I, I really didn't like it. Um, my side deck's just about done, uh, unlike certain people on YouTube that say, I don't want to show my side because I'm afraid that someone's going to see it. I don't give a crap about that. I actually do a full deck profile. <laughs> so um, here's what I'm working with. I I'm actually really happy with it. We're playing one Magnemut, uh, two, two Drew Swarm. I would bump it up to three, but we really need that scatter shot for time. Uh, yeah, that's, that's a thing. Um, we're on three copies of Super Poly. Let me lower this down. Uh, three copies of Super Poly, it's really good. Uh, Feather Duster for Rescue Ace. Uh, this should be three evenly matched, not two. Uh, and then we're on three TC Boo, and then the one Crime. I really don't know how I feel about Crime. It doesn't come up a lot. And like, you have to have not just a tier monster on the field, like that's fine, but then you have to have a monster in the hand. And that's really hard, especially if you're just busting a load on the board and you don't have anything else in your hand, then this is just dead. So I really don't know how I feel about Crime. Um, but it is a searchable, basically solemn judgment. So, but guys, that's my deck. Um, I've, I've been really happy with how it's been performing. Um, you know, is it an RNG deck? Yes. I mean, that's how it plays. Um, but I'm, I'm really happy with the results overall of how it's been working. I'm sure some people are going to be pissed off in the comments, but like it's cash Tira. Like I'm going to play the best deck I have. Uh, to have a chance of winning, but we will be playing Centurion Horus after this regional because no matter what happens at this regional November 11th I'm gonna turn around and sell this deck quicker than you know an NFT <laughs> And then I'm gonna turn around and buy up Valiant Smashers and start playing Centurion Horus because that deck makes King Calamity like it's nobody's fucking business Guys, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video